Welcome back to this course of X-ray crystallography. In the previous couple of lectures, we have learnt about the structure factor and scattering factor. So, we would like to continue in this direction one uh, in next few lectures and we will try to understand the importance of structure factor and how one can relate structure factor to electron density through a Fourier transformation. And then also we will try to understand the origin of systematic absence using these structure factor equations. So, the theory of structure factor as we are continuing theory of structure factors. which we write as FHKL and as we have already understood that FHKL is nothing but the ratio of the amplitude of scattered X-ray beam from all the atoms in the unit cell divided by the amplitude of scattered X-ray beam from a single electron. So, this atomic scattering factor, sorry, so this structure factor capital F H K L, it is a function of H K L that means for different plane H K L, it the value of this F H K L will be different because the plane that we are talking about have different orientations. So, different atoms present in the unit cell will have different contribution to the diffraction factor that is the FHKL on that particular plane. So, the scattered structure factor for this plane will be different from that plane and it will be different from this plane, it will be different from that plane, all possible planes will have different scattering factors. So, it is a function of that HKL that is the Miller indices of the planes and position or location of the atoms because these atoms are actually the scattering centers which are scattering centers. So, what we need is that we need to develop to develop an expression between FHKL and rho XYZ where rho x, y, z is the electron density associated with the atom location x, y, z and there may be n number of atoms located at n different sites in the unit cell. So, we need a nice equation to equate these two quantities f, h, k, l and rho x, y, z. So, to understand this what one needs to do is to go through a process where we assume we are having a simple harmonic motion and from there we would extend our understanding. Suppose we have a point A moving in a circular path. So, 
So that point A moves in a circular path with a center at O. And this point A has a fixed angular velocity equal to omega. So at any given point of time, the projection of OA on say this is the x axis is OB and OA represents the vector F and projection of OA on x axis is at B. So at a given position of A making an angle phi with the x axis and this being rotated along the circumference of the circle at a given fixed angular velocity omega this represents a simple harmonic motion. So, if I try to plot the linear displacement of B with respect to the origin O, this motion would look like a curve like this. So this is the plot of linear displacement of B as a function of F and phi. So at this direction is your direction of phi and we start it here at 0, this is the direction of phi and the maxima is reached when phi equal to pi and that is equal to f cos phi equal to f at pi equal to pi. If the angular velocity omega is constant and then phi is proportional to omega t. So, this will represent the linear displacement of B along the direction of phi. So, now suppose if there is a phase difference. we draw the same curve with a phase difference of delta with respect to the origin. So in that case, these terms f and delta
if and delta also characterizes a vector of length f in a complex plane making an angle delta with d positive real axis x. So, the situation is like this. So, in the this is the drawing of f in a complex plane where f makes an angle delta with the x axis. So, one can write f equal to a plus i b which is nothing but cos delta plus i sin delta. So, this x representation a plus i b is termed as the rectangular form and cos delta plus i sin delta is termed as the polar or trigonometric form. So, from here one can write the value of mod f equal to this is a small f value of f equal to a square plus b square and delta equal to tan inverse b by a. This is how one can represent a simple harmonic motion of, of a particle in a circular path with a vector f. Suppose we have a crystal here and x-ray beam is impinging on the crystal and it diffracts in all possible directions. So, when such things happen, multiple waves are scattered at various directions. So, then we need to understand how these waves are superposing. So, we need to understand little bit of superposition of waves. So, let us assume, let us assume three scattered waves f1, f2 and f3 with phase angles delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3 are scattered.
they are scattered simultaneously. So, in a vector space diagram, we can represent these three waves in this way. Suppose this is F1, this is F2, and F3 is in a different direction like this. So, the overall wave, the summation is capital F. This F1 is making delta 1 here, F2 is making delta 2 there, and F3 is making a phase angle of delta 3 here. So, now if we use the component projection method to do this addition, then the corresponding x component turns out to be f1 cos delta 1 plus f2 cos delta 2 plus f3 cos delta 3, which can be written using a summation over i f i cos delta i. Similarly, y can be represented as sum over i f i sin delta i. Whereas, f equal to x plus i y. So, modulus of f is nothing but square root of x square plus y square, which is now equal to sum over i f i cos delta i square plus sum over i f i sin delta i whole square and then a square root of this. And the overall angle of f that is the phase angle of f which is alpha can be written as tan inverse y by x which is equal to tan inverse sum over i f i sin delta i by sum over i f i sin sorry cos delta i. So, this is how the superposition of waves can be calculated and we learned the same in the previous class as well. So, what does a structure factor represent? F H K L, the structure factor is the resultant of n waves scattered in the direction of the concerned reflection that is perpendicular to the plane HKL by 
the n uh, small n atoms present in the unit cell. All these waves, all these waves have an amplitude proportional to amplitude proportional to the atomic scattering factors which is represented as Fi and a phase angle delta I with H K L as well. So what we need? We need an expression for the overall phase delta with x, y, z and h, k and l. So what we know is that the plane h, k, l cuts a in H parts, B in K parts and C in L parts. So when we have a set of HKL planes with a distance dHKL and a set of reflections, a, a set of wavelength, uh, X-ray wavelength, sorry, when a diffraction occurs from these two planes HK of uh, indices HKL, the phase difference for one cycle is equal to 2 pi. So, the phase difference for unit translation along x, y and z direction would be equal to 2 pi h, 2 pi k and 2 pi l for corresponding the phase difference about one cycle. So, the phase difference between two points 0, 0, 0 and x, y, z 
he is nothing but delta which is equal to 2 pi hx plus ky plus lz this is the expression of phase difference between the sets of reflections from a set of parallel planes with indices h k and l So, one can calculate the mod of FHKL as sum over Fi cos 2 pi Hxi plus Kyi plus L Z I whole square plus sum over F I sine 2 pi H X I plus K Y I plus L Z I square overall square root. So, we write this term as A and the sign term as B. So, one can write F H K L is equal to A square plus B square square root of that. So, one can write F H K L equal to A plus I B and alpha H K L is equal to tan inverse B by A. <coughs> so, now let us see a situation for two different values of h k l which are related by a center of inversion. So, that means, I am talking about h k l and h bar k bar l bar. Let us first see it pictorially. Suppose, this vector represents f h k l and this vector represents f h bar k bar l bar. If we join the two tips, this portion represents v h k l and this portion represents B H bar K bar L bar and here it is A H K L equal to A H bar K bar L bar. The phase angle for the H K L reflection is alpha H K L, phase angle for the F H bar K bar L bar is alpha H bar k bar l bar. So, now from the figure we can easily see that a h k l is equal to a h bar k bar l bar, b h k l is equal to minus of b h bar k bar l bar, it is of opposite sign. And now, as i is proportional to f mod of f square, we can write i h k l equal to a h k l square plus b h 
के एल स्क्वायर विच इज इक्वल टू ए एच के एच बार के बार एल बार स्क्वायर बिकॉज ए एच के एल इक्वल टू ए एच बार के बार एल बार एंड बी एच के एल इक्वल टू माइनस ऑफ बी एच बार के बार एल बार स्क्वायर विच इज इक्वल टू ए एच बार के बार एल बार स्क्वायर प्लस बी एच बार के बार एल बार स्क्वायर विच इज इक्वल एंड टू आई एच बार के बार एल बार सो दैट मीन्स वी आर आई एट ए सिचुएशन वेर आई एच के एल इज एक्चुअल इक्वल टू आई एच बार के बार एल बार वॉट इज दिस एक्सप्रेशन कॉल्ड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट दिस दिस एक्सप्रेशन दिस रिलेशनशिप इज कॉल्ड the frittles law see although this i h k l is equal to i h bar k bar l bar which actually means mod of f h k l square is equal to mod of f h bar k bar l bar square but not but not f h k l equal to f h bar k bar l bar so what we should actually write is but h bar k f h k l is not equal to f h bar k bar l bar because they have the angle different which means the alpha h k l is equal to minus of alpha h bar k bar l bar so today we have seen in this lecture how one can derive the expression for structure factor once again using vector space diagram and involving the complex numbers and from there how to show that the friedel's law can be arrived at using these structure factor expressions so we will continue in the next class with the structure factor having an relationship with electron density